a hidden history lesson now at 530. Without this building on Vine Street, this one right here, we may never have had the World Series. We may never have had Billboard magazine or even the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. If walls could talk, we'd get an earful. Luckily, our Evan Millward knows who to track down to give it a voice. When you walk up Vine Street, stop at 1410. It's one of the most significant buildings in the city. And look up, 1873 is the year it was built. HW stands for Henry Wheeler. His cafe in this space would change history. And it gives you a chance to talk about sports, you can talk about music, you can talk about politics. Henry Wheeler's cafe and pavilion is where deals were made. It was just a special place. George Boss Cox kept a table here and ran a notorious political machine. It might as well have been City Hall. And he pretty much held court there. Um, decided politi political fates, um, he ended political careers. Reference librarians Chris Smith and Brian Powers are experts on the place at this point. Musicians from the house band formed the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. A deal over beer here led two local pamphlet magnets to create Billboard magazine. The partnership ended here too, paving the way for the magazine's pivot to entertainment. Apparently they wrote it down and put it in a bottle. And supposedly in the archives of Billboard magazine is this handwritten agreement. The idea for the World Series was reportedly born the same way, over beers at Wheelert's. There was just something about that German immigrant and Civil War veteran who ran the place. All the papers wrote about it. If you dig in deep enough, it's always about him because the business was him. But don't just take it from these guys. Hi, I'm Carol Trossett. She's Wheelert's great-great-granddaughter. This is where they were. They lived upstairs. And Trossett still has some heirlooms. This is the punch bowl Wheeler was given on his 50th birthday. His friends formed many of our favorite institutions. Other people who also are known to have spent a lot of time here, including some of the people who founded the Cincinnati Zoo. But Wheeler believed everyone belonged. The obituaries at the time say that his place became so successful, partly because of his personality and how just how good he was at interacting with all different kinds of people. Even after he died and Prohibition closed these doors, history still had to be written. Three stories above Vine, Ezra Charles was putting in work. And that's where he trained when he was uh, training to become heavyweight champion. Wheelerts had been empty for decades until this spring when Mad Tree moved in. I think we're trying to honor the history um, and the intent of how he built this space. So in a way, what's old is new again. In OTR. It gives you an excuse to sort of talk about the heritage, you know, the, or even the mythology of, of the city. I'm Evan Millward, WCPO 9 News.